it's time to take a couple boys out after deer on the general deer hunt. Who are the hunters? Well, it's my two sons, Riley and Luke, 11 and 13 year old boys that have been excited to hunt deer this year. Neither one of them have harvested a deer yet, so you can only imagine the dreams they had the night before of filling their tag with a big buck. As most hunts, this one started out well before first light. We figured we had at least a few miles to cover in the dark so we could be at a good glassing point at first light. So when the morning's first rays streaked across the sky, we already found ourselves 2,000 feet higher in elevation and overlooking a great hillside. It didn't take too long to find what we were looking for, a white patch of hide on the deer's rump that gave its location away. Quickly putting the spotting scope on it, we found it was a two-point buck. We looked and looked to make sure there were no other deer, but couldn't find any on the slope in front of us. As I mentioned, Riley was only 11, and so he just wanted to fill his tag. Two points, three points, four points, he didn't care. One problem still remained. The buck was still 500 yards off and going further. Definitely too far to even attempt a shot. We discussed the options of passing on it or trying to go after it, and I let Riley make the choice. Well, as you can see, we've spotted a two point. Of course, you always want to find the biggest one and, uh, you know, big old four point or something like that, but. With this whole hillside so far, that's all we found is one deer, and it's the, it's the two points. So, Riley, what do you think? I think we should go get him. You want to go get him? Mm -hmm. All right, sounds like we're going to go get him. So, he's about 500 yards off right now. We definitely want to get closer. Uh, if we swing way over and come over, we can get within probably 150 yards. So, that'll be our goal. We'll uh, swing over. Maybe something else will show up. Who knows? But... We'll see if Riley can't get one. You know, this is, he's, he's just 11 years old, so, so uh, you know, you, you can't be too picky. We've only got a couple days to hunt with him, with all the other hunts that we've got with the kids and stuff, so I think that's probably a good choice. Good choice to see if we can go back as first buck. We hurried on over as best we could in the thick brush and steep terrain, stretching Riley to his physical limit. He was definitely in for harder work than he had expected for his first big game hunt, but he was also game for it. Finally getting over to the point where we thought we'd be able to see it, I spotted a quick glimpse of the buck. Oh, stop! Get up to that rock, right? Okay, down here, there's a gap. The last clump of trees. Unfortunately, I had seen the tail end of the young buck just as it went up and over this rocky ledge and into the thick trees. We waited for it, hoping it would show itself again, but it didn't. It appeared to have gone into the thick stuff for good. We did try a quick push through the trees, setting the boys up on a good vantage point if the buck ran over the ridge while I walked through the trees, but the buck just disappeared altogether. Well, we found a couple good spots to sit in Glassmore country, but couldn't find any more deer. Not even a doe. At one point, we were dropping down a very steep hillside to switch drainages when I saw something that looked out of place in a clump of trees. Putting up the glasses, I found it was a deer, and it bedded down in the shadows as soon as I saw it. Okay, so we spotted a buck that got up in bed for a minute, then it went and bedded back down. So we thought it was a doe at first, but once we put the spotting scope on it, we figured out that it was a, at least a three-point buck. So we're going to try to go sneak up on him. As Riley said, we watched it for a while trying to verify it was a buck. It looked like it had antlers, but I couldn't tell if they were just branches from the brush behind it. Finally, it turned its head, and I watched the antlers turn with it. So at this point, we knew it was a buck. As I watched it for several minutes, I was able to tell that not only was it a buck, but it was a four-point. Not a big one, mind you, but when I told the boys it was a four-point, you should have seen the excitement build with them. They would have been happy taking a younger buck, but the minute I said it was a young four-point, Riley especially was super excited. Even Luke, who has a tag that'll let him hunt a little longer than Riley, was willing to take this buck. Well, we kept a good eye on it and actually spent about an hour trying to close the gap on the buck. In the end, however, it didn't prove to get us a lot closer because the closer we got, the less we could see. As you can see, while we were trying to get closer, the buck actually stood up, repositioned, and then bedded back down again. Finally settling in at about 330 yards, I set both boys up for the shot. Riley had first dibs on this buck, but Luke still got ready in case Riley missed. 
have gotten in and set up and we're just waiting for him to stand up so that we can get a good shot on him now. As Luke said, we just needed this buck to stand up. That would give them a much larger target to aim at as the roll in the hill hit half of its body when it was bedded down. The minute seemed to go on forever, but when this little two point showed up, I had a feeling that might spur the bigger one up. And sure enough, the four point stood up. It was game on. Okay, it's up, it's up. Of course, we still had to wait for the two point to move a little to give us a clear shot. So we just waited. The buck is the one that's standing up, but the little one's head is right in the way. So we gotta wait. It's right in the butt, it's a two point. The little one's just right Suddenly, there. to our surprise, the two started sparring. Obviously, with this just being October 10th, it wasn't for real. Probably just practice sparring. Either way, this oh, meant we had no shot. Horns. We needed that little buck to get out of the picture, <laughs> but the chance of them both moving out of sight was a real possibility. Come on, little guy, just get out of the way. Shoot. Again, all we could do was wait. Of course, I can't deny it was kind of fun to watch them spar, even if it was just for fun. While it seemed to go on for several minutes, after just a minute of sparring, the little one decided to back off. Just our luck, the big one was still in sight and standing open for a shot. Okay, there goes the little one, it's walking away. Okay, big one's looking at us. Don't. Yeah, if you have the shot. Oh, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. Okay, if you've got the shot, take it, in the, right on the top of the spine. I had Riley aim for the top of the back as I expected about a nine inch drop at this range. Luke, go, Luke, go. At the first shots from the boys, the buck acted like it may have been hit, but I couldn't be sure if it was hit or just spooked. As you can see, he stayed put, but just his head was in view. As Riley loaded another bullet in the chamber, the buck moved a little so that we could see most of his body. Okay, I, I can see his head. Can you guys see it? Yeah, I can see it. So you can see where the shoulder is? As soon as Riley was ready, he shot once more. It, you were high, you were high, I think. Do I take it? That was a clear miss, so Luke took his second shot. You got it. I think you just got him. Well, the buck got up, and right as we were about to get ready and take a shot, he started sparring with this little two-point. When he, they like sparred for two, three minutes, and the little one finally left and gave up, and then he stood there and we shot him and it looked like we got him, so we're gonna head down and look. I'll tell you what, that was a couple of excited boys heading down to see the buck. We knew it was down, but the question still remained: Did Riley hit him with his first shot? They were already trying to decide who gets to claim it if they both got it, because they were both more than willing to tag the animal. I figured I'd just let it play out and see how they decided this between them. As brothers, sometimes they play well together and, as expected, have their fair share of fights. So it was time to see how they handled this if they both hit it. If we got to it and there was only one mortal shot, it was Luke, because I knew he hit it on his last shot. But if there were two, there would be some decisions to make. There's the tree. So he was, he was right here. There's where we shot from. So he was, he was right here, and then he kind of walked over there when it got hit. So come over here.
There he is, right there. Woo! Didn't even go far. <laughs> well, when we found him, we thought he was a young 4x4 four four and got a couple shots off and we got two actually and one hit the neck and it was the second shot that killed him right through the heart and there he is, he's got an extra fifth point right there and that's another neat thing. And it was from 310 yard shot and he only went like 15 yards from where we shot him. Well, when we looked at the footage, it looked like I hit it first and then Luke hit it second, so we're going to put my tag on it. Well, I was proud of Luke. While both shots would have killed the buck, it was Luke's that dropped it. Riley's shot was a mortally wounding shot, just not as quick acting. But as Riley hit it first, Luke let him put his tag on it. As we loaded the boned out buck on our packs and headed off the mountain, I was proud of both boys. I was proud of the hard hunt they did and were continuing to do as we packed this buck off the mountain in the dark, and proud of how well they worked together, making some memories that the three of us will talk about for years to come. What do you think, Rye? What do you think of deer hunting? Well, it's hard here, so hopefully next time we go deer hunting, it's not this hard. <laughs>